Awesome. Well, it's uh, great to meet you guys. Um, Kung Fu Panda 4 is obviously awesome. So I wanted to get started with uh, Mike. When you got asked to do this film, what were your sort of thoughts? Like, what, what, what did you want to bring to the franchise to kind of move it forward? Because it's been eight years since we've seen the last Kung Fu Panda movie. So what was kind of the new direction you wanted to take Poe? I didn't even want to start working on this film until we had a great villain. Because my favorite thing about this franchise, I think it's got the greatest villains of any animated film. Kung Fu Panda has created the coolest villains that stand the test of time. And so uh, it wasn't until we really went, until we landed on the chameleon and um, we got to, Viola agreed to voice it. And then with all the design, we started to design her and started to see Sean started to play around with her uh, uh her transformations and once we got to see that i was i was locked in i was like okay that was the biggest hurdle for me because i was like we th this has to have a great villain yeah absolutely yeah. and viola's so great in this movie and then um before we talk about her but i wanted to ask sean uh, when you're talking i read that you had a background in taekwondo and hapkido so i wanted to what were some what were some of the things that you wanted to bring to pose animation and other characters animation that we hadn't previously seen and sort of incorporate more modern animation styles? That's a great question. Yeah. I think early on, we wanted to make sure that Poe had progressed. So he didn't seem like he hadn't learned anything from the previous films, but we also wanted to make sure that he wasn't like a perfect martial artist and he was flawless. Part of the big part of the charm is that he's kind of still bumbling. <laughs> so he'll do some moves in this film that are actually kind of based on Taekwondo moves. Like there's a couple of moments where he does a tornado roundhouse kick which is a, a kick that I used to do back in Taekwondo. So yeah, we would infuse it. Like we were all, we weren't um, hundred percent just Kung Fu moves. We would try to infuse different styles and different types of Kung Fu because there's like thousands of Kung Fu styles. So yeah, we tried to bring the whole thing a little bit more forward. So he was definitely a better martial artist, but still not perfect. I think it made him pretty funny still. It was, yeah, 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 that was a good thing that they did is the animation. It's like really cool moves, but at the same time, not leaving behind the comedy because Poe is so funny and he's such right. a fanboy. Even when he's fighting, he's like geeking out on the on the villain that he's going up against. So it was great that the, his movement still had that quality. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And um, so when you're talking, when you're bringing back Jack Black as Poe, obviously he was who's so funny, who's so great in the role and seems like just like the most awesome person. How involved is he in crafting Poe's sort of arc in the story or is he more like, you send him a script, he gives his notes, or is it more of a back and forth collaboration? No, it is definitely back and forth. He is dedicated to this character. He loves this character. Uh, he is this character. Like he is Poe. He's like a, he's action packed. He could do high kicks. He's a fanboy <laughs> in real life. And uh, so, yeah, he was constantly discussing. Um, it's interesting too. I thought the same thing with Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy is so funny and Jack Black are so funny that you don't recognize that these guys are really tremendous actors and making choices. And so um, it wasn't just recording. It was even in between times before he came in to record, he was very into this character and discussing specifically the theme and where he was heading towards the end of the film. So he, he was instrumental in a lot of the storytelling in this movie. And on a personal and, note, we love Jack. Jack actually wanted to come in and meet the animation team. <laughs> so it was his idea. So the last week of production, we brought Jack in and he got to say hi to everybody. And we showed him the trailer for the first time. He was geeking out. The first time he saw Poe come to life again, he was cracking up. It was so yeah. cool working with him on this film. And he brought uh, he brought Aquafina with him and it introduced her to all the animation team as well. It's really cool. Oh, that's so awesome. Yeah. And so what were the conversations around? Because he gives up, I guess we can talk spoilers, but like he gives up the Dragon Warrior mantle. But what were the sort of conversation around that decision? Because that's a massive thing. I think, I mean, the first film is when he gets that title initially. So when, uh, what were those kind of, kind of conversations and how did that come together? Well, it was, there was a lot, I will say there was a lot of discussions before we moved forward. Loads of discussions, crazy things that we considered, even, I, I guess, even as we're making the film that we were just talking about that Sean and I, there was so much debating uh, within because we're all super fans and we wanted to make sure we're making the right choices and moving in the right uh, direction. But that one in particular, 
we knew that this, we didn't want this to go to streaming. We didn't just want to hand this to Netflix and like how Netflix has destroyed the theatrical experience. We wanted people to go into the theater, see all of our hard work on the big screen, hear that big Hans Zimmer score. You know, we wanted to make a big epic film and we thought to kick it off, we've got to do something dramatic. And, and, and the most dramatic thing that we came up with after coming up with a whole bunch of ideas was like, what if he's not the Dragon Warrior anymore? And it just made everyone lean in and start asking questions like, why? Why would that ever happen? I don't believe it. And just that everyone that being passionate about it and popping like popcorn in the room, we're like, oh, this is a good idea. This might be something we want to explore. So that's where it came from. It came from like, what is the most dramatic, interesting move that we can make to tell a story? Yeah, oh, yeah, it helps the theme, you know, about change. Like, I, I think if, again, just to talk about how Poe changed in this film, if we didn't make him grow, you know, he it might be kind of boring or it's like he's the same exact character. So we wanted there to be some growth in this movie. And having him become the spiritual leader definitely gave him a new avenue to go down. So it was fun for To be the new... Yeah. Sean, I don't know if you know this, though, but behind the scenes, this was like a big discussion that everyone had. And some people were against it. And a lot of the people were like, they wanted Poe to become a teacher. And this is how I won the argument. I was like, okay, let me just set it up. This, you know, this summer, Poe is going to not, you know, he's going to lose the mantle of the dragon warrior. And I said, or this summer, Poe is going to become a teacher. <laughs> I mean, to me, it was just like, I, there's one movie I don't want to see. And there's another one that I'm very interested in seeing. Right. So that's great. Like, Good question. You but you you found a, a dug into one of our issues that we discussed early <laughs> yeah. on. No, it did a straight because I remember. I mean that. I mean it came out with 08. I was in tenth grade. I remember it being a big deal when he became the Dragon War in that movie. Yeah, so it's huge. Like, it's like, like, like it's my childhood going away. So, but yeah. Yeah, we're um, trying to mess with your childhood, man. We're trying to. Yeah. Like... <laughs> um, but yeah, so Sean, when you're animating, and then but Mike, both of you, um, you get the chameleon, who's an awesome character. Viola voices her so well. But and chameleons are very because I've seen I mean I've seen lizards around you you everyone's seen them where they they change colors and you don't even like you can blink and they're a different color. So what was that animation process like? What were you looking at? What kind of reference <laughs> models and how did you actually like pull it off to make it look as cool as it did on screen? Oh, that's great to hear. Yeah, we we go so deep you wouldn't believe it. Like we have a, a paleo a paleontologist biologist. His name is Dr. Stuart Sumita. So he came in and did a whole two hour lecture on chameleons and komodos and how they move and how their eyes can move independently. So we looked at a lot of real life stuff and then we tried to infuse as much as we could without it looking kind of strange because she has a dress. We still wanted her to be anthropomorphic and still be like a really menacing villain. And if she was walking around just all the time, like a real chameleon, it wouldn't have been as, as cool. So what we did was we saved moments where she would actually go onto all four legs, like at the very end of the film. And it looks really creepy. Or she'll move her eyes independently like a real chameleon. So, yeah, we would try to infuse as much real life, you know, kind of chameleon biology as we could. But we also wanted to make her really menacing and threatening. And sometimes a three foot chameleon just wouldn't do that. We're like, how do yes. we make her scary? How do we make her a formidable opponent for Poe? So hopefully, yeah, we pulled it off by infusing what we could with real life chame chameleons. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I mean, Violet just so perfect in that role too so i don't want to keep well yeah on. it was interesting viola's voice was so intense that you don't consider how small the chameleon is so yeah. we kind of pulled back on a lot of gags that we had we're just like it's more interesting for her to be terrifying and sean had just finished animating the wolf from puss in boots mm -hmm. um the last puss in boots film and we decided we really liked how terrifying <laughs> that wolf was and we want to do it again with viola totally awesome and then um when you're I, I'm both of you have worked with um, when you're I mean sorry when you're bringing back characters like Tai Lung in this film well not exactly or I guess you are bringing him back but then you also don't bring back the Furious Five so what were those kind of like which cameos you wanted to bring back and because I mean I guess story wise there isn't a real reason for the Furious Five to be involved but what was that kind of process like and how are you updating their sort of um, fighting techniques and making them sort of yeah well, we figured this is part four, and they've been such a huge part of part one, two, and three. And we just wanted to make room for more characters in case, you know, people were interested to see more out of this franchise. 
So there was so much that we tried to fit into this movie. And in fact, we had much larger stories for the for years five. And we just thought it was more interesting to introduce new characters. So for whatever reason, they kind of moved back. But make no mistake, we were passionate about we I mean, there was a lot of talk about making just a completely only Furious Five movie. We had so much material <laughs> with those characters. They're like they're beloved. They're awesome. So um, who knows what will happen in the future? But it's crazy all the amount of of ideas and and uh, stuff that we came up with with Sean's team and with the design team with uh, Paul Duncan uh, with the effects team alone. That uh, you know, it was just. I, we didn't feel comfortable making a three hour long movie and that's what we had. <laughs> yeah. Right. And we were so excited to bring Ty Long back. I mean, we watched the first movie over and over and over. That was our first one. We're like, this is, if we could just fit in Ty Long, that would be amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I think before I got on the film, I heard that he was going to make a return in the fourth film. And we're like, man, we are in, <laughs> that's going to be so much fun to bring that character back. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that was, uh, it was awesome. Um, but thank you guys so much for your time. I really appreciate thank it. Thank you. Uh, it's yeah, been so great. You. Thank you. And uh, well, 